Good morning, boys and girls. So for science today, we are gonna take some notes in our science notebook. So if you can take a second, grab your science notebook, and if you'll go ahead and start your page, I think this is gonna be page two maybe. If not, it's page three. And it's gonna be solids, liquids, gases. So make sure you have your notebook and you're ready to write some notes. So we talked about boiling and freezing point a couple of days ago, and we talked about the physical state of water being solid, liquid, or gas. And so water as a solid is, um, hmm, how much? What? Ice, that's right. And then the liquid form of water is just what? Water, so like rain, that would be a liquid form. And then the gas form of water is steam, steam. So in our notebook, we're gonna write states of water. We're gonna write states of water. And we're gonna start with the liquid state. And that's just regular water, right? Then we have the solid. That's ice. And then we have the gas and that is steam, that is steam. Make sure you're writing in your notebook when Ms. Burton writes, you write, right? So these are the states of, the physical states of water. Oh, we should write physical over here. The physical states of water. And then our next lesson was to learn about what happens whenever I add temperature to these states of, of physical states. So we learned that the boiling point, right? The boiling point for water and if I draw a little thermometer, you guys can draw one of these if you want. I would love that in your notebook. And we'll come down here and we'll make this zero degrees Celsius. Right? And we'll make this one zero degrees Fahrenheit. Good morning, Coach Van. The boiling Everyone, point. Please turn your TV to channel 94 for this morning's edition of the Carmel News Network is 200 degrees Fahrenheit, right? 200 degrees Fahrenheit or 100 degrees Celsius. This is the boiling point. Um, and then remembering in America, we use Fahrenheit, but everybody else in the world uses Celsius, kind of like with the metric. We use um, customary units, everybody else uses metric units. The freezing point, we're gonna write it over here. The freezing point, again, here's my thermometer. Here's zero degrees. And actually, this is not gonna be zero here, it's gonna be 32. Let's fix that. So the freezing point is 32 degrees Fahrenheit or zero degrees Celsius. And so, and then there's this thing called melting point, melting point, and melting point is just right below freezing. So think about it. If I'm freezing at 32, you might see that the melting point is 32, but really it would be like 31 and 900 millionth whatever millionths. So one tiny little degree below is melting point. So that we're gonna say almost like freezing. It has to be slight, slightly warmer for something to melt, but not a lot, not a lot. So let me change that. It would be like 32 and, and one tenth of a degree would make that um, the melting point. So we're not gonna draw a thermometer for melting point because we would put 30 de 32 degrees on that anyway. All right, and then we learned that whenever we add temperature, when we add temperature, it makes a change to the particles inside every piece of matter. So here's what happens when we have a liquid. So we're gonna label this one a liquid. The particles in a liquid, they're free flowing, they can fill up anything. So they're not really tight together, they're not super tight together. So we're gonna write them. They're not necessarily touching, but these are the particles in water. And they're kind of free floating, but they're still 
you know, they're still filling in pretty full. So this is why a liquid can take up any shape that you pour it in because the particles are kind of loose. They're kind of loose, right? For a solid, for a solid, they begin to get very compacted. And you saw this, I think, in the Generation Genius video. We saw that the particles get pushed together so tightly that they start to form a solid. So they're not free floating. They can't fill in a liquid. I'm not gonna fill in the whole box, but you get the point, right? So a solid, the particles are really tight together. Then we have gases. Gases are like crazy guys. It's like they drank a whole bunch of um, soda and it's making them go everywhere. So gases are super far apart, super far apart. And they just kind of go willy nilly. They go all over however they want. When you add temperature, the temperature changes these states. So if I wanted to go from a liquid to a solid, if I wanted to go from a liquid to a solid, I would decrease the temperature, right? Decrease heat. I would decrease heat to go from liquid to solid. That makes sense. I'm gonna freeze something, so it's gonna get cooler. And remember we talked about there is no word like cold in science, it's just absence of heat. If I wanted to go from a liquid to a gas, a liquid to a gas, then I would increase heat, increase heat. So that's like putting your water on the stove, it's normal room temperature, and then you turn the stove on and as it heats up, that water becomes a gas, it turns into steam, it turns into steam. All right, so these are notes literally for the first three lessons in PLP that we have done. What are the states of matter? We have solid liquid gas. What are the boiling point, the freezing point? And then what do the particles look like whenever we decrease heat or increase heat? What do the particles look like? For today, you're gonna go into PLP and you're gonna open up, I, I think it's lesson five, you'll have to check your agenda to make sure. And, um, and we're gonna complete that lesson. Yesterday, you had a FET um, interactive that you did online, and then there was a check for understanding. So if you have not done yesterday's lesson, you're gonna have to do it first before you can do today's lesson. All right, have a good day. I will see you tomorrow. And um, big day today, we did a first math test and we're taking our first real notes in um, science. All right, have a good afternoon. Oh, stop sharing the screen.